morning. Whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I've been working on a, uh, I've been working on a title for this message, and you're going to have to help me because I didn't come up with one. So you, we, we get to, we get to, we get to discover that together. The word of God, I like it. <laughs> Philippians chapter four. Of, we're going to start in verse ten. Philippians chapter four, verse ten is where we're going to start. This is a. A, a very well-known scripture is used in so many different times, and you're going to like most of the times that you've heard this scripture used, except for the way I'm going to use it. <laughs> you're, we, it, the, the, the famous one that I'm talking about is actually in 13, Philippians 4, 13. It's on plaques. It's on your refrigerator. We put it everywhere. It says, I can do all things through Christ, right? And we love that. It's this great, powerful word. We say, I can do all things through Christ. And we pin it up. We put it on plaques. And, 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 and we, you know, through Christ who strengthens me. And, and we get this image in our heart and in our life of conquering, of defeating, of just, you know, being, you know, all the things, just making it. Just being prosperous is, is kind of what we get in our mind. But I want to use this in the form of the text that Paul used it in when he wrote it. Okay? And so Philippians chapter 4 Verse 10, he says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful but lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, which is, you know, beat down. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. I know how to be successful. In everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So let me put that in perspective. Paul said, I can do hunger through Christ. I can suffer through Christ. See, that's not, that's not the picture we typically like of that scripture. I can do all things through Christ. But Paul's saying, in the middle of my pain and suffering, I can do this through Christ who strengthens me. I can take adversity through Christ who strengthens me. See, sometimes we come to God. We read these with these power scriptures, if you will. I can do all things. We read it. We come to God and say, God, you can step in and rock my world. And would you change Husband, or no, excuse me, you could change my life, change everything. God, you step in and you make a change in my life. You bring, bring breakthrough. And God doesn't. Doesn't. Doesn't change your situation at all. He just changes you. He leaves you with the same situation, the same problems, the same issues. And he just says to you, ah, you got this. You go, uh, 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 um, 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 God. My, uh, my, my son and I. My son got to. He's in the apprenticeship program with me, and he, and he got to go to work with me. He didn't know I was going to talk about him. But this last week, we're doing a hard trial slab, which is a, a whole new level of finishing from what he's ever done before. And he's out there on boards, and he's scrubbing the concrete, and it's getting harder and harder and harder. And he's scrubbing it, and 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 doesn't didn't you know? He's like. Ah. To be honest with you, he picked it up great. He, he did a lot better than a lot of finishers do. But he's out there his first time, and he's troweling it. And let me tell you something. You rub your trowel across there, and it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it doesn't really help. And he was like, no, it's not doing anything. You can do this. Just keep rubbing. Just keep rubbing. I couldn't change the situation that he was in at that moment. But I could, t I could encourage him. And, and he could be changed. In our situation, when, when, when Paul was writing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, he was saying that I can be poor, I can be wealthy. I can be hungry, I can be stuffed to the bills. I can go through, the, through persecution and trials and problems, or I could be exalted and lifted up. And no matter what situation I'm in, God is still there, in there, and I can do it. I can do that. I can make it. Now, the, the, the reason I want to talk about this, I want to talk about, because I don't know if you know this or not, but life does not always a bowl of cherries. 
And we go through problems and struggles. And there are periods of our life, you know, there are seasons, right? The planting, reaping, and, and John kind of alluded to that a little bit it, with giving and getting. You know, you give and it goes away and it gets and it comes back. And you know, it came back and then you got to give it away, you know. And, you have, oh, yeah, and then it's gone, you know. I mean, and, and you, but this is what happens in life, okay? You go through a season and you're like, yeah, things rock. And then you go through a season and you're like, wow, things are terrible. All right. And you and, and unless we get this principle of being able to do that with Christ, you what happens is you get all joyful when things are good. And then you, the things start going bad and you lose your joy, you lose your victory, you lose your power, you lose your peace. Things start rocking and, and, and everything seems hard around you. Right. And so many times this is this we ride these waves of of joy. Yeah, God is great. And oh, where are you, Lord? And, oh, God is great. And where are you, Lord? All right. And this is not where God wants us to be. God is great while you're going down. Amen. That's one of these. You, you know, I, I, when, I remember when I was younger and you'd ride some of them rides and they'd see them crazy people and they'd let go of the bar, you know, ah! going down. Because it tickled their tummy. I didn't like that. That's not tickling my tummy. That's falling. Right. <laughs> it's not the same. It was it took me a while to be able to go. Yeah experience the fall right because i was still afraid of the fall and what happens is that many times in our situation we're we're looking around and we want god to change our situation and so you know and i could preach that message man god would come in and god will always be there for you and he will rescue you he will but sometimes he doesn't rescue you until after it gets worse so so i'm going to just be honest and so as you're going down and you're going into this tough time and everything around you seems to be rocking, what you need to do is learn this confidence and this power and this thing that comes only from the creator God to be able to go through that situation with your joy. Right. My son the other day says, Dad, did, did you know you hum a lot at work? I, I can't help it. <laughs> you know, I said, I, well, I knew that, but it just kind of comes out. You know, I can't help it. I, 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 and what, what I've noticed is the harder and the more I get into it, the more I hum and sing. La, 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 you know, I, I can't help it. That thing that's in me, that God that's in me, that stuff that's there is bigger than all the other situations that are flowing around in my life. All right, so what happens? We have to learn to be a person who is above the situation, who, who, who in the middle of all of these problems or frustrations or things that are going on, we don't, we're not riding the tides, but we're just experiencing joy and peace and comfort throughout those, all right? This is a maturity thing that we, that we want to get. Turn me to Matthew chapter 6. Um, we're going to come back to Philippians if you want to mark it or something. But uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. This is the, the, the worry scriptures. You guys know about that, not to worry, right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. 25. There it is. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you should put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? I, I'm almost thinking that shouldn't be in the scripture because I'm a meat eater. Bad joke. I'll move on. <laughs> the vegans just shut us off on the internet. Click. <laughs> Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not much better than they? Are you not much better than they? And which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic to his stature? All right, I want to stop. Uh, 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 he, he, why, why worry? We worry about things, and we start, you know, things start looking bad, and we start worrying. We look at it, we worry about it, whatever it is, this looming deadline, this, the, the, what, what tax time's coming up, right? I mean, we, the deb deadlines begin to move on or something, and we start worrying about it. And I just, why, should, why shouldn't I worry? D this is a scary thing. First of all, the Bible tells us that if you think about it, can you grow an, a, a, anything? Can you make yourself taller by thinking about it? Can you think yourself, can you just or worry about it? Can you worry about it and make yourself grow? And the thing is, worry accomplishes absolutely nothing. All the worry in the world will not fix your situation. Now, I'm not telling you just ignore everything around you, but worrying about it and dwelling on it will not fix it. It actually makes it worse. 
in, in, in verse 30, there says, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Worry is the opposite of faith. When I begin to have faith, I begin to, to look at something and say, this, this thing that God is going to come through. I don't know how. I don't know what's going to happen in my life. But there are so many pressures. And, you know, I kind of would like to point some of them out. But you know what's going on. Maybe it's family issues. Maybe it's personal issues. Maybe it's, you know, m- maybe it's financial issues. Maybe it's job issues. Maybe it's just drama issues. I don't know what it is. But there are issues in your life. Things coming at you. And you begin to fret on them or worry about them. It's the opposite of faith. Faith says that I'm going to put in, that God's going to build it, God's going to fix it, this thing's going to work out. Worry is the opposite of faith. So when we begin to worry, we begin to let our minds go there, and the Bible says holding every thought captive, it doesn't accomplish anything, and it, and it does something else in verse 32 there. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be reclothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what worry does is worry takes our attention, and it begins to put our attention on the issues, the problems, and other things, and takes our attention off of God and his spirit and his answer. It refocuses what you look at. Doesn't change your situation. Doesn't make your situation better, won't fix anything, just simply changes your focus. Did you know what's interesting is when they study uh, accident victims and and, and crashes a lot, they find that that a, a, a huge percentage of the people who ran into the tree were looking at the tree. And they would drive into the tree. Did you know there, they, they, there, there was some, uh, was the police officers that changed the bright colored on the motorcycles? They had the bright reflective vests on the motorcycles. They quit wearing those. Do you know why they quit wearing them? And drive into them. <laughs> they would look at that bright high-vis vest and drive into them. Crash. Okay, when you put your focus on is where you go. All right. And so when you begin to worry, you are focusing on this stuff and that's where you go. And you everything around you begins to feel that way. You just kind of move into that way. All right. When Paul was saying in here, he said, listen, when I go through these bad times, he says, it's no big deal because Christ who strengthens me. What's he looking at? Christ. He's looking at Jesus. He's looking at his power. He's looking. He says, seek ye first. What is he saying here? Look at me. Look at my, uh, at me. Look at, at, at my kingdom and watch what will happen. I'll lift you out of that situation. Now, he may not lift you out by changing everything around you, but he'll change you in that. And you'll be sitting there going, Whoa, I'm going down. Right? Because of Christ in you. So this is what worry does. Worry changes our focus. God wants to take your worry and move it from worry to faith. Okay? And this is the process in our life that will get us to this place where Paul was saying, I can do all things through Christ. If you're riding a roller coaster, every time you begin to worry, you need to realize, I need to change my worry to faith. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Worry to faith. 2 Timothy Chapter one, we're going through things, right? You guys go through things? No, just me. All right, I do. I go through things. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. Second Timothy one, verse seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There are 365 fear nots in the Bible. That's one for every day. You know, why, you know why there are 365 fear knots in the Bible? Because there's a lot of stuff to be afraid of. <laughs> but you don't have to be afraid of anything. Okay? And so the next thing that grips us, if it's not just worry, so maybe, maybe you know, I know that fear and worry are pretty close, but sometimes they're, they're not. They're not exactly the same thing. It's not that you're just, you're just letting your mind worry about it. It's just fear has gripped you, and it's like choking you off. You're so afraid of, of oh, the, the Scripture at one point says things to come, you know, 
things to come. You're looking at things that might happen or you're just the fear begins to grab onto you. The Bible says that I have not given you the spirit of fear. And I didn't know this. I didn't know that there was a little demon that ran around and his job was to make you afraid. Talking about demons in this place. Find me a different church. There's a demon, a spirit of fear. And he runs around. And, and, and I got really acquainted with this in, in, a, in a few things. Is it okay if I preach a little long today? Okay. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I'm going to do that for you. <laughs> Me and John got this. We got this worked out. <laughs> and so what happens is I begin to learn that there was a spirit of fear that grips you. Okay, and, and, and I began to figure this out in my life because I would go through these things, these times of fear. I remember when I was really young and dad would say, go out to the car and get something. And I'd go out to the car and get it. But when I turned around, don't look at me like that. The boogeyman was behind me. <laughs> and I always ran back to the house faster than I went out. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. Really? You were afraid of the dark? Yes. I was. I didn't like it. I didn't know at that time I was being chased by a little demon. Now I freaked everybody out. <laughs> no, because now that, that I begin to realize that there is this, this entity that puts that fear upon me to make me feel that way. So I remember one time I was, we had, uh, 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 we, we were living in a, in a single wide kind of, or uh, in a small trailer and there wasn't, there wasn't many bedrooms and, and we had a camping trailer off out to the back and I was sleeping in the camping trailer. And I remember one night I got up and had to go into the house and I'm not going to tell you why, but I had to go in the house. And I got up and I opened the trailer door and it was right by the slider door to get into the house. And, I sl and as I stepped out of my trailer, and I'm, I'm 18, I think I was about 18, I, I was, I was a kind of a grew up. And I, and I stepped out of my trailer, all of a sudden that, that little googly uh, spear thing hit me like it was when I was 10. And I stepped out of my trailer and it just hit me. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, and I grabbed the slider and I threw the slider open and my little sister was standing there and her eyes are about this big and she says, we're watching a movie and it's scary. <laughs> and I went, oh, caught you. Caught you. Get off of me. Spirit of fear. I don't have to have you. And God will change your fear to power. Okay. He'll change your worry into faith and God can change your fear into power because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but that of power. And when, when you look at your situation and the, and the fear of what could come begins to come on you, you can take that and begin to change that position in your life. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Bible says that I have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, the Bible says, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. All right? And when we begin to realize in our situation of this, and we're going up here, and we're going through tough times, and we're going through great things, and we're going down through the valley of the shadow of death, and the fear begins to grip us, we stop in the valley of the shadow of the death of our life, and we go, whoa, I can do this because I do not take this from a position of weakness, but I have a position of power, and we place in the place of fear in our life power and a sound mind. And then all of a sudden, we don't roll the roller coaster. Because let me tell you something. The reason I didn't let go of the bar on the roller coaster is because I was afraid. Right? Then I let go of the bar. And I go, come on. I'll take you. I'm not scared of you. I'm not afraid from a position of power. Okay. So in our lives, we're learning how to do all things through Christ. We're going through these. You go through them. I go through them. And we learn how to be of a place of, 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 of faith and faithful to God and not be worried and stressed out about our situations. Come on. Being on top of it only. All right. And then you go through the, the, this place of fear begins to grip us. And we move from fear to realizing of a position of power. God takes us from fear into power. God moves us out of these situations where we have in our life. Okay. Worry. The next thing that God does is takes us from turmoil 
to peace. Okay? God provides where turmoil has broke, God brings us into peace. Take us back to Philippians. Remember Philippians chapter 4. And I think it's, uh, start about verse 6. Verse 6. So God takes us from turmoil into peace. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And these things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. When th this scripture says the peace that passeth understanding, when Paul said, I can do, I can, I can go, I can be imprisoned and still be okay with God. I can have peace in prison. Why could he have peace in prison? Because God is still in charge in the prison, right? And he, and he receives something called the peace that passes understanding. Do you know why it's called that? Because if it's easy to be peaceful out at the, out, 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 out up in the woods and standing up on the, in the campground and climbing out of your camper tent and you climb out and you smell the air and the birds go by and you know you don't have to go to work tomorrow. You're like, ah, oh, peace, right? But then it's a different story when you climb out of the car at Walmart and the fear grips you and you have to take power over the fear and then worry grabs your mind and says, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to help anybody. And you're going to have to grab that worry and you're going to have to say the word says my word shall not go forth void. And you put faith in the place of worry. Come on. And when you and, and, and when and so when the when when you're in that situation where where the turmoils are beginning to rock and roll and move. And then in that place and you begin to put your thoughts, literally put your thoughts on those things of God on on the of God on, on who God is and you begin to move the what you think about over to that end as you do that peace begins to settle down and the God of peace begins to move in your life and gives you peace over that situation may not change your situation your situation may be rocking and rolling but God gives you peace probably the the most spectacular picture of peace that I ever have in my life was in the middle of a of, of a of a fairly decent uh, windstorm over at the coast, and uh, but my wife and I were over there. It was an anniversary or something? I don't remember. We were over there uh, by ourselves and just kind of enjoying hanging out together. Though, and it was Oregon coast weather, you know. And it, and the wind was blowing and it white waves and the wind. We were the the waves were crashing up on the rocks. They were shooting up farther than I think I'd ever seen them. They were just just thrashing themselves up on the rocks and shooting spray way up in the in the air and, and and those who were there were grabbing cameras and setting it up and trying to get pictures of this it was just like 30 feet there it was just huge sprays coming up and i think to myself that's peace you've got this storm bashing against these rocks and 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 everybody the only thing we can think about is get the camera <laughs> you know <sighs> look how pretty that is Right? That's peace that passes understanding. When the turmoil of your life is throwing things 30 feet in the air and it's freaking out all around you and you say to your wife, honey, get the camera. <laughs> Look at this. That's a storm. <laughs> That's peace that passes understanding. This is Paul. Let me tell you something. This is Paul in prison, beaten and down there and just worshiping and saying, Woohoo! Get the camera! <laughs> Look at this! Look at what's going on around here! You know? Look at what's going on around here. God is in control. Look at this. Serpent jumps out and bites him. Remember? He's standing there and reaches for a piece of wood and bites him. Everybody says, oh, he's dead. 
And he shakes it off. You should get a picture. That was a good bite. <laughs> Look at that, baby, huh? Woohoo! Battle scars. Yeah. Now that's a bite. <laughs> and that ain't one of them little wimpy gardeners. That one will kill you. <laughs> But the peace that passeth understanding begins to move. Listen, the devil, no, God is in charge, period. He's in charge of your trouble. As a matter of fact, he sent the trouble a few times. Okay? We, 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 hear, we read where God prepared a great storm. Why, why would he do that? Because he's not afraid of the storm and they're pretty. Okay? God prepared this. God saw this trouble coming your way. God saw the frustrations that you're experiencing. God saw all the turmoil that's coming away from you or coming your way or the problems or, or, or the drama or the feelings, the emotions and all the stuff that you might be experiencing. God saw it a long time ago and he knew it was coming your way and he could have stopped it, but he didn't and he didn't plan on it and he's probably not going to. Man, you got to love this preaching. <laughs> Matter of fact, when the wind comes, he might blow a little. <sighs> Why? Why would God do that? As I've shared before, God is more concerned with you than your situation. He can change your situation in an instant. You, he has to work on. <laughs> and so God is building us, not situations. And so in the middle of these things that are going on in our life, when you're going through your, your problems or whatever. Listen, I know the tendency is to allow those to affect you. We have to come above that. We have to stop allowing the situations that are rocking our life. How do we do that? One, you stop worrying. Your worrying is not going to fix it anyway. Stop worrying. Move your worry from worry to faith. Move it over. What if this happens? I like that, right? None of you ever do that, right? If this happens, everything's going down. I like to move it. Man, what if God sends me a million bucks? Well, he's probably not going to, but it's better to think about. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't help anything, but it's sure fun to think about. So you move from worry to faith, okay? Move your thoughts from worry to faith. When fear begins to grip you in your life, in the middle of your state, you just don't know how bad this is, Pastor Dale. I'm not belittling your pain or what you're going through in any way. But you don't have to be afraid while you're there. When fear begins to grip you, catch that spirit. And say, I do not have the spirit of fear, but of authority and power. And I take authority over fear. And I replace that fear with power in my life. Take a hold of that. Your situation may not change, but you will be changed. And in the middle of your turmoil, take pictures. <laughs> take pictures. In the middle of your turmoil. Years ago, my wife and I, things were not good for us as far as finances, and we were a struggling young couple and trying to get by with children and, and, and money and, and, and things in the church, and, and we didn't have any money, and the church didn't have money, and none of our friends had any money. And I remember one of the couples in the church, we had no vehicle at all. Actually, we had a sweeper truck that we were trying to make a living with, and we were cramming our entire family in there. There were no seatbelt laws, praise God. We would have been highly illegal. And I remember one of the, the family members had, 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 had seen where we were, and they gave us this car. Here, that's our car. Praise God, we got a car. It's a great car. But when you hit the brakes, like coming down a hill, it would go, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and we also found out that if you're driving down the road and you touch the brakes, you can go, <laughs> like that. And we had fun with the car because the kids would start crying and we'd touch the brakes <laughs> and laugh. <laughs> Pitch him, baby. <laughs> oh, hit the brake. <laughs> okay. I laugh about that car today. All right. I can enjoy that car. I don't have it anymore. But that turmoil didn't cause, it, it wasn't a, a huge issue in our life at that point. 
other things come along that we, you know, we, were, we, we fell to and we had to stand up to and get changed, you know what I mean? But that thing, when it came and the pressures came, we learned how to take that. that it was a warp rotor, but I didn't know what that meant at that time. And, and we didn't know. We didn't know. All we knew is it's all we had and it's what God had given us and we could do rumbly car. Amen. We can do rumbly car. Matter of fact, we do it pretty good. Uh, <laughs> all right. God will turn your turmoil to peace if you'll let him. All right. When Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, he was not preaching the powerhouse message of you're just going to get up and you're, you're going to fix everything. He wasn't. I don't, I don't, he wasn't. He wasn't saying that I will always come out with the most money or I will all, I'll never be beaten because I can do this and I'm going to conquer. He was saying I can be beaten and still be free. Still have peace. Still have joy. Still have my life full. All right? I can do this. And then the Bible goes on and the scripture tells us that God will take our sorrow into joy. In, 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 uh, in John, the Bible tells us about abiding in the vine. And, and Jesus began to talk to the disciples, and he said to the disciples, in a little while, you won't see me, and you're going to have sorrow. He said, and I'm going to be removed, and you're going to be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. What he was saying is, I'm leaving you, my presence, and, and I'm going to leave you, and when I'm gone from you, you're going to have sorrow. But that sorrow is going to be turned to joy because I'm sending back the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and he's going to be with you. And then he says, and that joy shall no man take away from you. All right? And so when we read that scripture, amen, when we read that scripture, it says, I am the vine, and you're the, if you abide in me and I in you, I'll abide with you. And then the Bible says, and, and, and he goes on, he says, and these things I've written unto you that your joy might be full. Here's the thing. God wants to take your, he wants to take your worry and turn it into faith. God wants to take your fear and turn it into power. God wants to take the, 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 you know, just the turmoil in your life and bring it to peace. And God wants to bring the sorrow of your life and turn it into joy by learning to dwell with him. And if we can abide in him, we'll have joy when we should have sorrow. I'll never forget. I went through, been through a lot of pains and, and a lot of issues and, and, and had a lot of very sorrowful things happen. I remember, uh, I remember when my brother passed away and I had to get up and preach that next Sunday and I didn't want to. I didn't want to get up and preach that next Sunday. But God just hammered me. I'm in charge of everything. God just hammered me and his presence came in. And I remember uh, uh, one time, and, and, and Barry was leading worship. I wasn't leading worship, and I was sitting down here, and I had just been through uh, an incredible heartbreak in my life. And I remember sitting there, and just heartbroken, not, not, not necessarily something I could fix or do anything about, but my heart was just ripped out and hurt. And I was so sorrowful, and I was sitting in that place thinking, how am I ever going to be the same? How, how is this ever going to be better? There's no fix there's no way to fix this pain that I feel, this thing that's happened to me. There's nothing I can do to change this pain in my heart. And I remember sitting there and, and, and worshiping, and they were praying, and I was thinking in my life, God, what are we ever going to do? And I remember just beginning to worship uh, just a little bit, and the joy of the Lord began to move on, and that sorrow began to lift up off my heart, and joy began to come back into my heart. I remember thinking to myself, there is no drug out there that will do this. <laughs> There is nothing out there that could break the sorrow this deep. Matter of fact, most of them brings you more depressed. There is nothing out there that could bring this level of pain and sorrow that I was in and move me into joy like my God and your presence and dwelling with him. Why? When we worship God and we get into his presence, we begin to abide with him, right? We begin to hang out with God. When we begin to hang out with God, God changes our sorrow to joy all right so when you're when you when you personally have your thoughts I, i'm, I'm going to wrap this up when you begin to allow your thoughts to worry you're moving the opposite of faith this is your action you need to take that worry move it into faith god is in charge okay when fear grips you move that fear in your life from fear real no i have been given power not fear and i take authority over power in your life 
when, when just the stuff, when, 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 when the problems of your life begin to just boil upon you, just remember, take pictures. This is going to look good later. This is going to be good later. That's going to be a good story. God will bring me through and enjoy peace. And when your heart has been abused or beaten or torn or hurt and you're full of sorrow, you begin to worship God. And God will turn. And as you abide in him, God will turn that sorrow into joy. And you, as Paul, will say, I can do sorrow. I can do pain. I can do problem. I can do scary. I can do this. I can do storm. I can do turmoil. I can do this through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that, God, you are a God who turns worry to faith. God, who turns fear to power, who turns turmoil to peace, and who turns sorrow into joy. You are the God who can do that. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.